All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie. Welcome back. We're back with another video, and this time back with Vinyl Finds. I think it's been at least a couple of months since my last of Vinyl Finds, and I always say I'm going to try to keep these videos short, but I've got quite a, a stack of records, quite a stack of wax uh, to get through. Uh, so let's start it off actually with a couple of CDs. Pick this up at my local thrift shop. This is Melissa Etheridge and Fearless Love. So this came out in uh, 2010, and at the time this was noted as kind of a return to form, or at least a return to her rock and style. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed this album man. I, I enjoy when Melissa Etheridge is rocking for sure and this was a pleasant surprise uh, this is Tears for Fears and Elemental and this came out in 1993 this is actually a Columbia House uh, version uh, distributed by Columbia House but it's still got the booklet and everything like that so they don't uh, you know rip you off with anything like that uh, so this was the first album post uh, Kurt leaving the band where it's just Roland uh, very much a continuation of uh, Seeds of Love I guess uh, Break It Down Again was a hit uh, one of their last hits on the on the charts but overall i thought it was a really pretty good album uh, mr pessimist uh, the fourth track i thought really had a nice groove if you like seeds of love uh you would definitely uh, enjoy this album so this was a pleasant a pleasant surprise pleasant find at my local thrift store okay let's uh, take a look at some vinyl hopefully there's something of interest uh, for you here uh, we've got the band Lovecraft, uh, initially known as HP Lovecraft. When they started off, they were kind of a psychedelic band. Uh, by this point, it's kind of more blues rock kind of sound, but uh, great. Happy to pick that one up. German band I do uh, enjoy is the band Tramferat, and this is their album A la carte. And as uh, sort of you can see by the back here, they kind of take the whole uh, a la carte thing. Uh, they have titles like Waterfall, Late Again, and For You, but it's the write ups on each of the songs that you'll see here, you know, with compliments of the house, a juicy appetizer, your choice of desserts, a last drink for you. So they, yeah, they kind of do that whole a la carte thing. Uh, interesting uh, with the band uh, Tramferat. Uh, their later stuff is maybe not as proggy as their early stuff. Okay, great Canadian artist who is truly missed. Um, I do have this album, but <laughs> I picked this up again uh, for the hype sticker. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so again, such a fantastic album. Uh, Jeff Healy, See the Light, his debut. And uh, the hype sticker reads, uh, Stick with it and you'll be bigger than Stevie Ray Vaughan, Stanley Jordan, and B.B. King. That's uh, according to B.B. King. Uh, includes Confidence Man, My Little Girl, I Need to Be Loved, and Nine Plus Nine More. And again, of course, the uh, title track, See the Light, fantastic. Okay, some uh, blues rock, uh, Omar and the Howlers, and uh, this is the album Wall of Pride, and uh, yeah, enjoying this album, uh, a nice uh, cover of We Gotta Get Out of This Place, but uh, yeah, gritty uh, blues rock uh, from Omar and the Howlers. Okay, just a wonderful album. You know, you almost forget what a lovely album this is. Uh, Bob Dylan's Nashville Skyline. We all know about this record. This was certainly his deep dive into country. Johnny Cash is uh, featured on the first track, Girl from the North Country, and there's quite a nice write-up from Johnny Cash on the back. This also has Lay, Lady, Lay, but uh, this is just a lovely album uh, to listen to. Okay, uh, an offshoot of Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, and there's been a few of those side projects. This was one I was not familiar with. Uh, this is Grace Slick with Paul Kandner and David Freiberg, and they've called this album Baron Von Toll Booth and the Chrome Nun. <laughs> there you go. So this one is kind of uh, psych folk, if you will. whole bunch of guest stars on this one. Gosh, including Jerry Garcia, uh, David Crosby. You've got Jack Cassidy on here. Also the Pointer Sisters, uh, to name just a few. Uh, thankfully, this came with all of the uh, you know interesting little inserts and things like that. They often get very creative uh, with the packaging of the Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship stuff. And on the grunt label, and it also includes the uh, insert uh, as well. It gives you the... Uh, uh, credits on who's appearing on which song sort of thing but yeah no I did enjoy this one again it's when you're listening to it it could have easily been like a late Jefferson Airplane or an early Jefferson Starship album quite easily and then quite a number of side projects with that band okay how about Creedence Clearwater Revival I'll, <laughs> I'll do the Chris Blues Guy Vital Creedence uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival and this is the album Pendulum uh, that features Hey Tonight and Have You Ever Seen the Rain uh, this one in a uh, very nice condition Nice gatefold on this one. And it's, this came out uh, surprisingly uh, with the uh, original inner sleeve, or at least a, a CCR sleeve. That's uh, I've never seen that before. Nice uh, listing of the albums there. 
So Cretans, Clearwater Revival and Pendulum. Certainly happy to come across that one. Okay, I'll quickly I'll put this back in, of course, on the fantasy label. All right, some 80s pop. How about Katrina and the Waves? And the creatively titled album, simply Waves. And uh, although no waves on the cover, but they look like they're uh, jumping up and down, having a good time. Uh, they had the hit Walking on Sunshine. Uh, this is from 1986 on Attic Records through Capitol. Um, I don't think there were any big hits on this, but it continues in that, you know, that Katrina and the Waves sound for sure. Okay, a couple of BTO albums did not have a copy on vinyl of Four Wheel Drive, a classic album, Four Wheel Drive's title track, Hey You, uh, also featured on this one, uh, with the nice raised lettering here, a uh, nice gatefold, and uh, certainly uh, for BTO, they did like their, their nice thick cardboard inner sleeves, so you got the band rock in there, and the credits there. So yeah, BTO. And uh, yeah, they're back out on tour, uh, pretty much just featuring uh, Randy Bachman, um, BTO. And this is another one. I never had this on vinyl. This is Best of BTO So Far. I do love bands that release like a Greatest Hits Volume 1 and then they never release a Greatest Hits Volume 2, that sort of thing, or the Greatest Hits So Far. Uh, but this, in terms of a single album, it's got pretty much everything you need right there. Certainly had this on CD uh, for a long, long time. All right, and speaking of another best of, how about the best of the band? A single uh, LP, and this is a nice little, nice little primer, nice little taster of the band. Uh, nice to have the uh, song "It Makes No Difference." That's just a lovely song, but it's got pretty much everything you need in terms of a single album. The night they drove old Dixie down, life is a carnival, the shape I'm in, uh, up on Cripple Creek, you know, the weight. It's got. Pretty much uh, what you need there. Couple of David Bowie albums picked up station to station. David Bowie Funk. And uh, this is on, of course, RCA featuring uh, Station to Station and uh, Golden Years. This does not include the original uh, inner sleeve, although, again, the sort of packaging with, for this was, was quite sparse, but uh, nice to pick up that. And David Bowie and Scary Monsters. And I believe this was the last... Uh, album for RCA before he switched labels, but uh, boy, what a way to uh, round out your, your RCA uh, catalog with Scary Monsters. Terrific, and of course, you know, you got Ashes to Ashes, uh, Fashion, uh, just a terrific album. And uh, maybe the cover's not in the best of shape, it's a little, uh, little water damaged here. And I didn't know initially, but I guess this is kind of owed to some of the earlier records, like uh, Heroes, uh, Lodger, and uh, Low. And this does include the original inner sleeve. Scary monsters. So yeah, very happy to come across that one. Scary monsters and super creeps. Yes, the full title of the song, full title of the album. All right, and moving right along, uh, very nice to see that Hart seems to be back out. The uh, the uh, Wilson sisters have uh, reconciled, and they're back out. Uh, I don't know if there's a tour plan, but they certainly seem to be on the talk shows lately. They've been on Howard Stern, and they have been on Jimmy Fallon with uh, total eclipse of the heart uh, for the solar eclipse. But here is Heart and the album Brigade, and this has the original Music World uh, price sticker on it, $9.99. Uh, all I Want to Do is Make Love to You uh, was the big hit from this one. Um, this, of course, as you can see, is still in the shrink, but then this also does include uh, the original inner sleeve with all the big hair uh, going on, uh, lyrics and more. So nice to see that Heart is back. Okay. Uh, you know, my love for the Water Boys. I uh, picked up the Water Boys. This is the first album as a mini LP. So this is, it's like an EP, but it's not, uh, you know, uh, for some bands, they have separate stuff that they release on EP. Uh, this is simply a, a mini LP of the first LP. So it's just uh, fewer songs, that sort of thing. Uh, would have been obviously available at a lesser price and just kind of, you know, the Water Boys were brand new. A very young looking Mike Scott on the cover there, but uh, the Water Boys mini LP. And uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, from uh, the Canadian vaults, we've got uh, an Irish uh, transplanted band. These are Irish uh, expats that uh, came to Canada. Uh, the Irish Rovers, they had to hit the unicorn. Uh, they decided to do some rebranding. Of course, they were you know in Canada for, for many, many years at a TV show as well. And they decided at this time to do some rebranding. They dropped the Irish from the title. They simply were the Rovers. Uh, going a little bit more country-ish uh, on this one. Uh, in fact, produced by uh, Jack Richardson of Guess Who fame. Uh, but this one also has the big hit, Wasn't That a Party, which is kind of a novelty type song. Maybe not as novelty as Grandpa Got Run Over by a Reindeer. But uh, Wasn't That a Party was a massive hit. In fact, written by Tom Paxton for the band. I guess he had toured with the band, presented uh, the song to them as like a demo. They kind of reworked it and... Uh Turned it into a big hit. So there you go. I don't know. I've always got a soft spot for the Rovers. There you go. Okay, this was a thrift store find. Roy Orbison's greatest hits on Monument in mono. So a nice, uh, nice little... Um, Quick overview for uh, some of the uh, great uh, Roy Orbison early hits. All the, you know, many, many of the big hits on Monument for a single LP best of. Okay, uh, we got the Beach Boys with a very bootleg looking cover. This is, wow, great concert. That's what this is called. Essentially, uh, this is a reissue of the Beach Boys in concert with fewer tracks because this is a Pickwick uh, label. I don't know, it was kind of, this didn't cost me very much. I was kind of drawn in by the sort of bootleg label sort of thing. Uh, thought I'd give it a chance, but it's, yeah, it's Beach Boys in concert with simply fewer tracks. That's uh, pretty much it. And that's often with Pickwick Records. Um, it, they're usually budget reissues with fewer tracks. I don't know. So it's kind of a, kind of a drag that way when you know, you know, you're missing tracks. <coughs> okay. Uh, here is a very interesting compilation. This is, a, I believe, a Canadian uh, issue on Columbia Special Products. This is TK's, uh, which I understand was a clothing line for teenagers, clothing and gear, that sort of thing. So this is music to wear TK's by, kind of a play on music to watch girls by sort of thing. Interesting compilation because there's only four bands uh, featured on here. So you get nice, uh, generous uh, helping of tracks for the Birds, Simon and Garfunkel, The Circle, and Paul Revere and the Raiders. Again, all Columbia artists. So I thought, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of cool. And a pretty hip, cool cover, too. Music. So it's music to wear TKs by, and then they got TKs to hear music by. So there you go. Okay, uh, some Canadian uh, 80s. How about the band The Spoons? Uh, always enjoy The Spoons. Uh, they had uh, hits like Tell No Lies and uh, Romantic Traffic. Uh, this is Bridges Over Borders. The uh, title track was, it was a hit. Uh, we're getting into the sort of the mid 80s uh, by this time. Uh, for the band, uh, The Spoons. Okay, here is an obscure Canadian uh, one that I found. This is a band called Chicken. That's right, C-H-I-K-K-I-N. Chicken, and of course, if you got a band called Chicken, <laughs> which came first? Uh, so that's the title of this album. Uh, this is on Egg Records uh, from 1978. And uh, unfortunately, the inner sleeve is not... Uh, was not included with this, but this was like a trio. I believe this was their only uh, album. And uh, believe it or not, uh, it also comes on colored white vinyl. So the whole thing looks like a nice <laughs> sunny side up or <laughs> over easy egg. Uh, it's a fascinating album. It's kind, it's proggy and kind of new wave all at the same time. It's a very uh, unique listen. I'm definitely going to uh, check this album out a few more times and give it uh, maybe another spin or two, but uh, absolutely uh, fascinating. Maybe not to everyone's taste, but a very uh, unique find. Certainly chicken. <laughs> there you go. Okay, uh, moving right along, we've got... Uh, more 80s pop with uh, Peter Cetera, formerly of Chicago, uh, and his uh, solo album, and this one is called Solitude, Solitaire. Uh, the cover, I don't know if you can see, is in terrible condition. It is quite uh, 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 warped or water damaged, and, but the album plays fine, and it's, it's, it's interesting how it's water damaged or heat damaged, but it's still in the shrink, but I don't know if you can probably uh, kind of see that. It's just not in good condition at all. However, uh, the uh, inner sleeve is there. Yeah, and this was a, a, a thrift store find. Um, so yeah, I mean, big hits on this one. Glory of Love, uh, The Next Time I Fall. That was with Amy Grant, as I recall. Uh, the title track, Only Love Knows Why, uh, on here too. You know, that unmistakable Peter Satira sound. Okay. 
And we've got another best of. This is the best of Crosby Nash. Um, a very a very nice uh, album overall, and it features... And it's interesting that Crosby Nash didn't really have any big hits sort of as a duo, kind of on their own. Uh, to the Last Whale is a really very lovely song. Interesting with this best of that they include uh, Chicago, which is a Graham Nash solo song, and they also include Laughing, which is a David Crosby solo song from his album, If I Could Only Remember My Name. Uh, interesting with uh, Crosby and Nash... Uh, just listening to it again, it's more. They did more of a kind of. Not, I don't want to say easy listening, but they had more of a kind of a, a moody, atmospheric kind of approach uh, to their music as a duo. So it's not going to spur a lot of big hits, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, very nice that this came with the original uh, inner sleeve. Now you see them. Now you don't. But uh, yeah, this was a. Uh, and again, sort of the nice raised lettering on ABC Records, uh, interestingly enough. Okay, this was a thrift store find. I almost passed up this one, but I'm glad I didn't. Uh, this is Love Unlimited, under the influence of, of course, completely <laughs> under the influence or under the direction of Barry White. And uh, interesting, they also include Love's Theme, uh, the instrumental, which is from the Love Unlimited Orchestra. So this is the trio of the gals, Love Unlimited. And it's very soulful, slightly disco. This came out in the early 70s on the 20th century, but a really nice listen and a pleasant surprise to find that at my local thrift store. So that was nice to pick that one up. Okay, a band I still enjoy, Three Dog Night, that don't often get a lot of love or get almost kind of forgotten about. Suitable for framing with a lot of hits on this one. Uh, you've got... Um, uh, you've got Eli's Coming, Easy to be Hard, also a Celebrate, their cover of uh, Lady Samantha. It was an Elton John written song. But uh, yeah, there you go, a three dog night. <laughs> still, still getting some love in my house. But it's amazing how many uh, uh, hit songs this band had that really just had captured some of that 70s uh, sound, or at least 70s radio sound. Okay, we'll get to Soulful once again with Tower of Power. Anytime I see any Tower of Power, I, I pick it up uh, when I can. Uh, Tower of Power in the slot, kind of taking that whole theme uh, to the forefront there. Okay, we'll switch gears with the band Wishbone Ash, and uh, this is their album that is called Locked In, and uh, certainly from the UK, and definitely enjoy uh, Wishbone Ash, that sort of uh, folk rock kind of thing uh, that they do. Okay, I took a chance with this one, did not know anything about this band. The band is called Sweat Hog, and the album is called Hallelujah. And this, I think, is before Sweat Hog's <laughs> thing with uh, Welcome Back, Cotter. I could be wrong on that, or it could be roughly at the same time. But uh, this is a kind of, uh, as you can tell by the back, it's good blues rock. Uh, they do a cover of Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo that kind of uh, gives you an indication there. But uh, Hallelujah. I'm not quite sure what's going on exactly with that cover, uh, but there you go. Uh, now, here is another one I took a chance with. Uh, interesting uh, cover, a very uh, satirical political satire there. Uh, this is a band, I believe it's called Fresh, and the album is Fresh Today. This kind of, again, is very sort of blues rock, but it reminds me a little bit uh, of the uh, of the Fugs, uh, if you will. Uh, that sort of slightly satirical, but with that sort of, I don't know, bluesy rock kind of thing that's uh, going on. So yeah, happy to pick that one up. Okay, uh, a, a Kinks album, kind of Kinks. Gotta like it in terms of this is on Marble Arch and uh, on Phono Disc uh, through uh, the uh, Canadian distribution on that. You know, you got Tired of Waiting, their cover of Dancing in the Street, uh, great early Kinks there. And uh, the cover in very nice condition uh, for something, something like this. That uh, this has been around certainly for a while, and of course through Pi Records. Okay, uh, the granddaddy of uh, Canadian rock and roll from the States, uh, Rockin' Ronnie Hawkins. I do like picking up uh, Ronnie Hawkins' albums, especially the ones in the 70s. Uh, his, you know, his early stuff uh, when he was first on the scene was great, great rockabilly. Then he kind of had this weird kind of folky phase. But then once the 70s started happening, or late 60s, early 70s, he really started kind of rocking again, almost that sort of rock and roll revival. So that's kind of what's uh, going on here. Um, and this is on uh, Monument Records. So, and then, uh, yeah, happy to pick this one up. And this is a nice gatefold here. 
And the band is rocking. Now, I don't offhand recognize, or nobody jumps up. Uh, in terms of uh, Boots Randolph, though, is uh, featured on this one as a special guest. But in terms of the musicians, uh, there's Fred Carter, Grady Martin, Dave Kirby, Tim Drummond, and it looks like uh, Kenneth uh, Buttry and uh, Jim, or sorry, Jerry Kerrigan. Um, there's nobody that's leaping out to me in terms of, uh, you know, how it could have been the, you know, <laughs> the people that he worked with in terms of the band or crowbar, that sort of thing. But, uh, for this one, nobody's leaping out, uh, in terms of, uh, notable musicians, but, uh, those in the know can certainly let me know in the comments if I'm missing anybody in particular on this one, but this is rock and roll resurrection. The one and only Ronnie Hawkins. Okay, uh, we've got to Deep Purple. Uh, interesting, I see Deep Purple's back out on tour, and I think there's a concert date announced for Toronto in August with uh, Deep Purple and Yes, and how about that? So this, I've got two uh, Deep Purple uh, sort of sort of compilations here. This is called Deep Purple, Purple Passages, and this is simply an early compilation. A uh, nice little write-up there. And then, again, this is like the early stuff with Hey Joe, Hush, and uh, Kentucky Woman, Mandrake Root, and then we've got uh, Early Purple, Deep Purple, very much as in the similar vein, like that. A very moody cover on uh, Polydor Records. Okay, did not have this Traffic album, Traffic Last Exit. So this is kind of like uh, uh, a compilation of sort of the, some of the extra stuff, or I don't know if it's any necessarily B-sides. Yeah, it might be B-sides as well. Uh, but this is when, the, you know, they put this out as sort of after the fact uh, with Traffic. So you've got uh, Side 2 Live at the Fillmore West, and then you've got some, uh, some tracks, uh, sort of tracks on Side 1, but of course with Steve Winwood traffic last exit okay a couple of chicago albums i guess maybe i should have had this with peter satira but you've got chicago three uh this is a two record set uh this does not contain the poster that was supposed to be in here now whoever put the now it's interesting it, it looks like a hype sticker and i keep uh, but it's actually it seems to be part of the i don't know if this is a slightly later issue on that but yeah that's not uh, that's part of the uh, design there, which is interesting. Anyway, uh, it does include the lyric uh, sheet uh, that's sort of sort of in the center here that just kind of comes out again, not, not in the greatest of conditions. It's a little slightly a little water damaged here. Uh, but yeah, it does not uh, include the original poster, but still amazes me with this band Chicago, especially in the early days, how every studio album and the, you know, the first several were all double albums like that is a lot. To, to be putting out that much material and then including that massive uh, live box set. But gosh, the early, you know, several albums, two, three, uh, four, and I'm not sure into five, but they were all double studio albums, which is pretty amazing. And then we have a, a Chicago uh, collection that spotlights the Columbia years, and they put this out when uh, Columbia or when Columbia, when Chicago had uh, switched labels when they were on uh, Warner, or I can't remember if it was, I think a Warner uh, label, but uh, this is Chicago simply called If You Leave Me Now. Now, they kind of left the obscure, it looks like, well, it could be a new studio album, but it is a, a compilation, a sort of greatest hits of their Columbia stuff. But happy to pick that up. It's a nice little, nice little record. Always happy to pick up any and all from the Young Bloods, and this is the album, uh, Good and Dusty. And I think uh, kind of what you see is what you get. It's good and dusty. Uh, they've got a, a cover of uh, Willie and the Hand Jive, cover of Will the Circle Be Unbroken, kind of getting into their country rock uh, thing going on. Young Bloods, of course, what a great band. What a great band with uh, Jesse Colin Young. Wonderful. Okay. Moving right along, we've got uh, the band uh, Syrinx, Syrinx, I believe is how it's pronounced, uh, this Canadian band, uh, very much a, I don't know, could you say they were sort of almost early Tangerine Dream, uh, very uh, keyboard heavy, very atmospheric, uh, that sort of thing, and uh, so this is their album, this is their debut album on True North Records, and a very unique uh, 70s sound, and I think this is a good cold, yeah. But they put out a couple of albums. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, very, very interesting band. You know, the Moog synthesizer kind of thing going on. All right, picked a few of these up at uh, one of my local record stores, uh, uh, Diamond Dogs, and uh, they had this one on sale. This is Memphis Soul 68, and this was, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a record store day uh, issue. Uh, this is on a, a UK label, uh, but it features like kind of, I want to say, fairly obscure stuff, uh, sort of from the sort of Memphis Soul or Stax Volts, if you will. And then he... Uh, Offered me a good price on this one they had it that he had sitting on the shelves. This is West Coast Soul uh, 68. This is as part of a big uh, history of soul um, thing going on with more sort of, you know, obscure, hard to find uh, soul records. I don't know if it's necessarily all Stax Volt stuff, uh, but there you go. A great listen, though, of course. Okay, I did not know the drummer for the Moody Blues put out a solo album. Seems all the Moody Blues members put out solo albums, so uh, Graham Edge did as well. This is with Adrian uh, Gervitz, and this is Kick Off Your Muddy Boots with a very uh, futuristic <laughs> cover going on here. And it has kind of that, uh, that Moody Blues feel, but uh, yeah, even the drummer put out a solo album, so there you go. And uh, speaking of the Moody Blues, I'm surprised I did not have this on vinyl. Uh, this is a simple Moody Blues compilation, Voices in the Sky, the best of the Moody Blues. Pretty much focusing on uh, more of the early stuff than, than any of the uh, 80s uh, kind of stuff. This came out in 85. But a very nice uh, cover there. Okay, carrying along, this is, I took a chance on this one. This is Tracy Nelson and Mother Earth. And again, sort of continuing in that sort of uh, country rock or country blues rock uh, thing that's uh, going on. And another album that I really enjoyed. Didn't know too, too much about uh, this band at all. They did put out a few records, um, but I'll have to check out uh, Mother Earth or uh, other uh, Tracy Nelson uh, albums. Did enjoy that for sure. Okay. My album's got a mind of its own down here. Okay, this was a unique find of the Candymen. And this is Candy Power. The Candymen bring you Candy Power. And now the Candymen, as far as I understand, were a backup band, at least for one time, for Roy Orbison. And then they kind of carried on on their own, uh, getting into kind of a little bit more slightly psych, uh, psych pop or, you know, still kind of bubblegum kind of thing going on. Because, boy, they... <laughs> Play the whole Candyman thing right to the top. This is on ABC Records, and uh, yeah, very, uh, very enjoyable. Again, you know, you've got that kind of sound going on for an album like this. I don't know if you can see all that, but boy, they play the whole thing of the gumdrops, peanut brittle, pralines, cotton candy, ginger, licorice. Yeah, yeah, we get it. <laughs> the, the band's called the Candyman. Yeah, yeah, we get it. <laughs> okay, um, some, again, Canadian uh, country rock. This is the Cooper Brothers. Now, I'm holding it this way because that seems to be uh, the way the uh, album, uh, because it comes out from the top like this, but then the spine's on the side here. But this is one of the final Cooper Brothers albums. Um, they're completely, they used to be on Capricorn, but then they're on Salt Records for this one and learning to live with it. Uh, interestingly enough, Les Emerson from Five Man Electrical Band joined them uh, for this album, uh, continuing sort of in that uh, country rock, although uh, they're, you know, well, or getting into the 80s with this one, so the sound is changing a little bit uh, for 80s tastes, but uh, never uh, see this one. Uh, I always see the uh, Capricorn records for the uh, Good Brothers. They had the songs Rock and Roll Cowboys and The Dream Never Dies. Really nice, always very nice harmonies and that sort of real country rock sound. So happy to come across that one. 10cc and this is Deceptive Benz. Did not have this one. Of course uh, in the back I've got it of course on uh, the 10cc uh, box set but fantastic to have the hypnosis cover uh, like that. And of course, on this one, the things we do for love. And when 10cc was just down to the two. 
but just yeah really getting back into 10 cc really uh, enjoying that band just the great harmonies and there's just great uh, arrangements okay a band <laughs> i've been coming across a number of black oak arkansas albums i don't know i seem to be striking uh, gold with this um, so this is i believe this should be their first album the self-titled black oak arkansas and this has hot and nasty on it what a, there's some band, this band, I don't know what it is, certainly with the vocals of uh, uh, Jim Dandy, uh, it's, this is just an unusual band, like they're just a little, <laughs> little interesting, shall we say, and this is a live album, Black Oak, Arkansas, and uh, Live Mother, I believe it's what it's called, or Mother Live, I think Live, live Mother. You know, just a, a really over-the-top type of band. Okay, let's uh, put some soul in. I never cross any, come across any uh, Bobby Womack, and this is Communication uh, by Bobby Womack. A number of covers on here. He does a cover of Fire and Rain, which really works. He also does a cover of Ray Stevens' Everything is Beautiful, which doesn't work so much. But overall, the album is very nice. And, you know, when you see a Bobby Womack album, you're going to grab it sort of thing. Love Bobby Womack's vocals. Wonderful. On uh, United Artists. Okay. Didn't know that this actually was available on vinyl because I've always uh, just seen this on CD. And this is the best of the Mamas and Papas, 16 of their greatest hits. And, you know, you can't go wrong uh, with a song selection like that. But I, as I say, I, I'm always just so used to this on CD. I didn't know this was, was even available on vinyl. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, wonderful. Again, talk about great harmonies and just great arrangements with the Mamas and the Papas. That whole Laurel Canyon thing is absolutely wonderful. Okay, uh, nice to come across this. Um, I do have a better copy. Uh, this is uh, Beach Boys and Pet Sounds. And yes, this is a mono version of this. And so this is a, an original or early press, but this LP is not uh, in the best of condition. I think the, the cover is in better condition uh, than the vinyl, but it, it did come with, I believe, uh, is an yeah, original capital sleeve. Uh, but very happy to pick up this one. I do own the uh, Carl and the Passions a double uh, LP disc that has that mono copy uh, included of the Beach Boys Pet Sounds, which is quite nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's still enjoyable to listen to, but uh, a little on the scratchy side. It sounds like a campfire <laughs> going on uh, while you're listening to this. But uh, happy to pick that up. Okay, we got to Temptations, Greatest Hits, Motown Memories at its finest. Uh, can't go wrong, especially with this, the, the, these issues with, uh, you know, just the simple covers, the greatest hits. But boy, you know, tons of great tunes uh, with the Temptations. Here's, I think, maybe my new favorite band, a, a UK band I was not familiar with called Heads, Hands, and Feet. And this is Old Soldiers Never Die, a UK band that has that real sort of southern rock thing going on. Absolutely terrific. Uh, noted that uh, guitarist Albert Lee uh, was part of this band, but I'm telling you, great sound. I think this is one of my uh, favorite sort of new discoveries, uh, if you will. And I don't know if this was on this album or... But there was Yeah, there was <laughs> one thing of somebody here and then Air Canada... <laughs> Gets wheelchair. Uh, I don't know what's what was going on there. Maybe uh, concert exhaustion was happening. But uh, so yeah, so there's that one. And then I was also able to pick up uh, the album Head, Hands, Feet. I'm not sure about the title of the band, Head, Hands, and Feet. Uh, I think they could have come up with a better uh, title than that. But the album tracks, and of course, uh, you know, with the uh, locomotive thing going on. But another great album. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, do check out, and they're on Capitol Records, Heads, Hands, and Feet. If you like that Southern rock thing with a UK flavor, uh, well worth checking out. Okay, speaking of the UK, this was an interesting find, an early Steve Howe album. I don't know how the name of the band is pronounced, if it's Bodast or Bodast, or the, this is called, the I'll say Bodast, the Bodast tapes featuring Steve Howe. They got the name, they were formed in 1968, the name is derived from the first two letters of the three original members, Bobby, Dave, and Steve, so B-O-D-A and S-T, that's <laughs> as creative as they came up with. So these are, this is the Bodast tapes, um, I don't really know a lot about this band, but again, it's early Steve Howe, so this is like, band was born in 68, so this is stuff uh, roughly from 68, 69, so it's got that kind of slight psychedelic uh, thing going on. Uh, I'm not quite sure even what, what's going on with the cover, uncovering these tapes and the woods there and digging them up. 
Uh, but very cool to uh, come across that, especially, you know, when it would lead to some of the psych stuff that Steve Howe was doing then before he got into Yes. And so very cool. Uh, great soul band, Ides of March. So they had the hit to Vehicle. This is another uh, Ides of March album called Common Bond. What a terrific band. Um, just terrific. Great, great soul. Uh, super vocals. Just love this band. Love them. Okay, this is also a uh, interesting find. This is Pearls Before Swine, a noted psych man, and this is These Things Too. Uh, happy to come across uh, this one uh, in the wild. Because Pearls Before Swine are getting uh, pretty hard to find. Okay, now here is an obscure album. This is a band called Whole Wheat 100%. Uh, that's right. And uh, they thank a lot of people on here. Now, it's kind of that... Um, sort of country rock uh, kind of feel to it. Uh, they have a lot of uh, help or thank from Fleetwood Mac on this one. They thank Lindsey Buckingham. Uh, they thank Fleetwood Mac. They also thank uh, Glenn Campbell, Bob Ezrin. They even thank Liberace for use of one of his pianos. Uh, this is a band, and one of the band members is Michael Fleetwood. And there's been some speculation that was this a Fleetwood Mac offshoot, uh, but Michael Fleetwood plays electric guitar and vocals and as we know Mick Fleetwood uh, plays drums so this is uh, I don't know if this specifically I'm assuming an American band but I'm not sure um, there's not a lot of details on this one uh, but a really nice record uh, and just strangely obscure and uh, some of the uh, old stickers on here this was actually at one time property of CBC Record Library Toronto so don't tell the CBC library but I've got a copy of whole wheat 100 <laughs> percent and this came out in 1977 so again when Fleetwood Mac was really uh, starting to go huge so yeah happy to come across that one the circle red rubber ball love the circle great 60s sound also a turn down day I uh, was on here and uh, the circle is if I recall were uh, managed by Brian Epstein and I believe it, reportedly it was John Lennon who came up with the uh, spelling of circle that way to be cool okay you want you want to talk about a great vocalist Maggie Bell of the band Stone the Crows love her sound love her voice and she's just got some great albums and this is another one called suicide sal and i believe this was written uh about her aunt or somebody uh, in her family but i mean if you love janice joplin you're gonna love uh maggie bell absolutely a terrific also a cover of hold on on this one and uh also uh if if you don't know is featured on here so there's a few covers i saw him standing there <laughs> covered on this one but very, very nice. Terrific. Okay, another <laughs> obscure Canadian one, if you're still with us. <laughs> uh, this is the Grease Ball Boogie Band, and simply called a two-record set. It's just self-titled. Uh, they later became the band Shooter that had the hit uh, Long Tall Glasses, which was a Leo Sayer one. Uh, this is pretty much what you see is what you get. This is all sort of rock and roll cover. So this came out on the GRT label, Canadian label, in 1973. It's a good rockin' album. Again, it's just all covers. You can al almost argue it's kind of almost like a Sha Na Na album, but that just rocks a little bit more. I uh, don't... <laughs> Don't know if I should show you the inside or not. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the lead guy or the <laughs> featured lead guy uh, for the Grease Ball Boogie Band. I think this is the only album that they made and then they later became uh, the band Shooter. But uh, there you go, that was an interesting find. Okay, I found this one at uh, my local uh, record shop, uh, Sound Fixation, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, Shiny Beast, Bat Chain Puller. Really enjoyed this album. And happy to come across Captain Beefheart. And it was fairly reasonably priced, so I didn't have to charge too, too badly on that one. Because Captain Beefheart records can get kind of expensive. Okay, we've got a couple of uh, Bonnie Raitt albums. We've got uh, Bonnie Raitt and her debut. Absolutely wonderful. And it kicks off with a Stephen Still song, a Bluebird. But uh, wow, just absolutely wonderful. So got Bonnie Raitt and then a later Bonnie Raitt record simply titled Home Plate. There she is sliding into Home Plate. And uh, this one produced by Paul Rothschild, uh, in fact. Very cool. So Bonnie Raitt coming at you there. 
Another fairly obscure band. This is a band I was not familiar with. They're simply called West, and then the album is Bridges. And this has that really sort of uh, laid back, it's got a kind of a country rock thing going on. Don't know a lot about the band, but uh, I don't think there's anything on the inner sleeve, anything like that. But there you go. And that's on Epic Records. I don't think they had too, too many albums. Another fairly obscure band, the band West. Okay, this was, a, I almost did a double take on this one, because when you're flipping through, again, when you're at the thrift stores, it's like, oh, it's another, you know, another album that you've seen a hundred million times. And then I almost flipped past this one, but then it was like, oh my goodness, Best of Bobby Bland, Yes Please, on Duke Records. Wow. With I Pity the Fool, Turn On Your Love Light. Fantastic. Yeah, as I say, I almost, because you're just kind of flipping through, almost flipped past this one, but very happy to pick that one up. Okay, Donovan's uh, Greatest Hits, and uh, this was the one that is Gatefold, uh, because they did reissue this later that it wasn't a Gatefold, so very nice with, uh, yes, lots of uh, pictures here, lots going on. Very nice, and a great selection of tunes on this one for Donovan's Greatest Hits. Okay. I'll just quickly put this one back into the sleeve. Sorry about that. All right, here's an odd compilation. Now, the other one uh, was available as well, but this is on Columbia Records, and this was uh, Our Best to You, Today's Great Hits and Today's Great Stars, playable on mono equipment for best results. Use a stereo needle, though. And so this one uh, spotlights the 60s. The other one that was available, uh, the same sort of uh, design, a different color, uh, featured a lot of the uh, 50s ones that were okay, uh, but I definitely went for this one. I probably should have picked up both just for the set but I just went with the ones but it's got like the Buckinghams the birds crying shames Aretha Franklin Moby Grape featured on a compilation which you don't often see also part of Paul Revere and the Ragers Peaches and Herb uh, Simon and Garfunkel the Tremolos and the Circle was turned down day again okay how about uh, some Shaka Khan fantastic Shaka and this features I'm Every Woman so happy to pick that one up uh, when I was in uh, London, Ontario, not too, too long ago, I went to Grooves Records and uh, found, uh, did some digging and found uh, two Steve uh, Hillage uh, records. And these were one of his final records. Uh, very different where he's getting into, I can't remember which one's first, four, uh, four to next and not or, or, <laughs> or, or vice versa. But uh, he's getting into a little bit more of a uh, electronic sound uh, with this, but uh, really uh, absolutely enjoyable. Really enjoyed uh, picking up uh, Steve Hillage. Not a lot of great guitar playing on that one, but uh, very interesting sound. Okay, an odd uh, Eric Clapton uh, compilation, simply called Clapton on uh, Polydor, but uh, some tasty tunes on this one. An interesting cover for sure. Uh, here is a band, another, uh, as far as I understand, fairly obscure band called Great Jones. And again, uh, this is kind of a blues rock kind of thing, but this doesn't look like an old album cover, does it? it, it to me, it looks like something that almost maybe could come out today or looks more sort of 80s, 90s or 2000s. But uh, yeah, there you go. So this is uh, roughly 1970, a uh, great kind of country, country rock uh, or country blues rock thing going on. But yeah, don't know a lot about the band, but uh, did enjoy that one. Okay, happy to pick up uh, Gary Newman. Yes, please. Uh, Gary Newman and Tubeway Army Replicas. Fantastic. Finally got a copy of Hot Tuna and Burgers. Of course, Hot Tuna again. Another Jefferson Airplane uh, offshoot. Uh, certainly so many great albums for Hot Tuna. Fantastic playing. And this is absolutely a lovely, lovely album. And I mean, their playing is so, so good with Jack and Jorma. Fantastic. And I also seem to have luck uh, with this particular band. I seem to be finding plenty of rare earth records. And if you'll indulge me uh, just for a little bit, uh, pick this up at my local uh, record shop. Now this is a reissue. This is rare earth uh, generation. And apparently this, you know, this is on hot pink, uh, opaque vinyl. And it's, you know, it's a 1969 impossible to find uh, generation soundtrack with this very interesting sleeve but then of course we'll take a look at the vinyl there on the great uh, rare earth the record label i'll just put that over there and then we've got uh, again some interesting uh, record covers uh, for this band we've got uh, rare earth and willie remembers 
There's uh, lots going on in this cover. Not exactly sure what. <laughs> and this one is one of the ones that kind of opens in the back like that. And then it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's a single album, but it's a trifold uh, release. And then you got, if I can turn this around here, got all this going on. I do like Rare Earth, uh, just that great, uh, you know, Motown, very funky uh, kind of band. And then you've got uh, later uh, Rare Earth uh, with uh, Midnight Lady, uh, getting into a bit, little, little bit more of a, a sort of a disco kind of sound. And then I just picked this one up. Uh, this is uh, the album Ma with an interesting cover. And uh, again, side one uh, is the song Ma, so it covers the entire first side, but this is completely a Norman Whitfield a production on this one, and this album rocks. You know, it was a very soul funky band, but boy, again, they could rock, but it's interesting, boy, with Norman, Whit uh, Norman uh, Whitfield, he did some amazing stuff uh, with uh, Motown Records. Okay, here is an Unusual Blues Fine. We'll send this one out to uh, Chris at Blues Guy Vinyl. Uh, this is Chicago Blues All-Stars, loaded with the blues, and this is on the BASF label. Remember the cassette tapes and whatnot? So this is uh, recorded, I believe, in Germany. It recorded July 1st in Cologne, and it features Willie Dixon, Sonny Land Slim, Big Walter, Shaky Horton, uh, Johnny Shines, and Clifton James. Wow. Can't go wrong. I don't know. It's, I don't know why Willie Dixon has a cake there. Uh, it looks it looks like a cake or something. I'm not sure what's what's happening there. I can't remember if this was gatefold. Yes, it's gatefold. But yeah, I don't know what exactly the celebration was. I don't know if it was Willie's birthday or what exactly uh, was happening with that. All right, I'll just do that over here. And uh, speaking of blues, um, pick this one up, simply called The Blues Band. This is a UK outfit, and this features a Paul Jones of a Man for Man on lead vocals. Uh, pretty serviceable stuff. This came out, I want to say in the late 70s, maybe early 80s, 1980. Uh, it's pretty, pretty rock and blues. Nothing, you know, earth shattering or anything like that, but, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty fun find. The Blues Band, quite simply The Blues Band and Ready. Okay, we've got the uh, Souther Hillman uh, Fure Band, produced by Tom Dowd. And of course, you know, you can't go wrong uh, with this kind of a lineup. Again, great uh, country rock. Happy to pick that one up and uh, pick this one up for really cheap, uh, surprisingly. Okay, and I guess back to the blues, if you will. Uh, this was a really nice find. Didn't even know this existed. This is John Mayall and Friends Along for the Ride. Unbelievable uh, guest list. And this is very much in keeping with some of the uh, John Mayall releases where you'd bring back some of the blues breakers for special guest appearances. And this is all studio stuff, but check out the guest list on here. And I did not know... Uh, so again, you got like Carrie Moore, Peter Green, Mick Fleetwood, Mick Taylor. Uh, you got Johnny Lang, Otis Rush, all appearing on a variety of tracks uh, through this. Uh, Jeff Healy is featured on here, and John McVie. And so there's a track here with John Mayall that features Peter Green, Mick Fleetwood, and John McVie, which I think had to have been one of the final things uh, that they put together. So this was an unbelievable find. And uh, really nice, really nice to listen to. Uh, this came out in 2001. And numbered as well. So there's that. Okay, we'll have time for just a few more. Uh, this is, again, some more fairly obscure stuff. Notes from the Underground. Very cool. Uh, we've got uh, the Rolling Stones and Through the uh, Past Darkly Big Hits Volume 2. And of course, as you can see, this does not include the original <laughs> inner sleeve, but it does. It is the uh, the cutout version that opens up like that. And, you know, again, great to Rolling Stones tunes. I uh, got more blues rock. I tend to pick up, if I see any Albert Collins, I tend to pick up any and all. Albert Collins and the Icebreakers live in Japan. Very nice. Uh, more Motown memories so with the Supremes at the Copa. Very nice, and again, very much in keeping with the live Motown stuff when they're at these sort of supper clubs and things like that. Um, so the, their sound changes a little for these supper clubs. They tend to do a lot more uh, standards and things like that, but uh, these are certainly historic recordings for sure. Okay, how about uh, The Best of Uriah Heep Volume 2? Love, love, love Uriah Heep. Okay, Welsh band by the name of Man, and this is Back 
into the future. Not back to the future, but back into the future. And a really nice uh, glossy uh, cover to this one. Almost has that kind of uh, Elton John Honky Chateau uh, kind of look to it. But a uh, nice uh, double album. Very, very cool. Oh, all right, so there's that. And then I think we've got just one more. Uh, how about the Rascals and Peaceful World? And again, with the Rascals kind of going into these uh, concept albums, you know, they weren't selling a lot of records at these times, but uh, again, fascinating records uh, for the band. Great, great 60s, uh, early 70s band, the Rascals. Okay, <laughs> that is going to do it. Sorry this one went way too, too long. But again, I do thank you for your patience. And thanks for dropping by, and we'll chat again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.